The yoke is the ultimate strength builder. Like if you're, if you're an athlete who's trying to get strong at any level, this has to be in the arsenal. It just has to be. There's nothing where you can overload your frame in this way. You can't move more weight faster than when you can with the yoke on anything else. If this isn't overly technical, this is relatively simple and it creates a safe environment where we can carry some real weight. You can carry it like we did traditional. You can carry it Zerker style, carry it overhead. You can do static overhead holds. In all of those different scenarios, we want the skates to be six to eight inches off the ground. So if you're gonna do it Zerker style, you set the crossbar so that when you pick it up, six to eight inches off the floor. If you're gonna lock out overhead and you're gonna carry it overhead, you start here, stand up, okay? What we're gonna start with is hand position. Most of us are gonna be flexible enough to get the hands back on the crossbar. So if Logan sets himself up, you wanna put the bar across your back. Usually where you back squat is gonna be the most comfortable. If you're flexible enough to get your hands in the uprights, this works pretty well because you create a nice little shelf for that bar to sit on. If you lack that flexibility, you can grab the uprights and you'll see a lot of pro strongman doing it this way. But you've got to pinch your elbows back, you've got to make that shelf, and you've got to be even more deliberate about picking your chest and chin up. Because the tendency when you put your hands out is to start to look down, okay? So Logan's gonna set his hands on the crossbar, put the bar right where we back squat, the chin is neutral, the feet are right underneath the hips, and we stand up. The correct height on the yoke itself is so that the skates are about six to eight inches off the floor. And the reason, you can set it down, the reason we do that, we don't want to set this bar too low because then he's got a deep squat to pick it up. And it's okay with body weight, maybe two times body weight, but when we're talking three or four times body weight, that gets serious. We also don't want to set this up another notch because then every step he takes, the skids are going to touch the ground. It becomes really distracting. So we want to find that sweet spot where we have a little bit of room but not a deep squat. One of the most common mistakes that we see is people take a really aggressive first step. They think, I'm gonna move quickly. You end up setting that thing up like a pendulum. Instead, what we wanna do, we pick it up and we gradually pick up the tempo. So the first step is deliberate and slow, and then we gradually pick up our cadence, heel toe. I want you to notice when he comes back, there's two things going on there. Look at how still and flat the yoke is as he walks forward. There's absolutely no movement. That thing tracks flat. There's no left to right and there's no up and down. The second thing I want you to look at is when he exits the yoke, he drops his body down, doesn't give up any angle here, he just drops his body down and continues to move away. That yoke is gonna track flat and out. You guys follow that? If you open up your stride, if you look at his feet, it's a very short stride. It's a quick heel toe. You want the cadence to be really quick, but as soon you don't want to open your stride because as soon as I open my stride, I've lowered myself down. Now I'm going to have to go up and over. All that up and down with 3x body weight, it starts to beat you up. So we want to glide. Okay? Let's watch one more rep. We pick it up, heel toe, quick pace, and out. When he comes back, the last thing we're gonna look at is his feet. His toes are turned out just a hair, and he's got a little bit of a flex in the knee so that he acts like a shock absorber. He moves very quickly, but he also, he doesn't walk like he's on a tightrope. He walks like he's on railroad tracks. You guys follow that? Just a quick heel toe, nothing to it. Um, a couple things with the yoke. Substitutions, what can we sub for the yoke? All right, let's run that analysis. What did you carry on the yoke today? Perfect, so I'm gonna take, I'm gonna put a rack over here and a rack down there. I'm gonna load the bar with 620 and I want you to take it out of the rack and I want you to carry it down and rack it up on the other side. Before or after my leg break? Thank you, that's the right answer. What's the penalty for a misstep? I set you up on the question. What's the penalty for a misstep on the barbell at 600 pounds? 
catastrophic. Catastrophic. What's the penalty for a misstep on a 600 pound yoke? There you go. The yoke creates that in safe environment where we can really explore the limits of our capabilities. You guys follow that? It creates that environment so that we can go right to the edge where the breaking point is here, not like this is gonna ruin me for the rest of my life. So substitutions, no, there are no.